So let me introduce you to my grandfather. His name is Franz. He's 88 years old and he used to be an engineer at Philips. My dad took this photo of him recently and you can see he looks quite happy. But that wasn't always the case. My grandmother died um, six years ago and after her death he felt like he couldn't stay in that big old empty house anymore. So he moved into a retirement village. But he really hated it. He couldn't adjust. He became, over time, quite negative and withdrawn and bitter. And it was a very difficult thing to see. But then about a year later, something changed, and he changed. He started telling stories again and cracking jokes. He became a lot more social. He even started a board games club at his retirement village. And he loves it there now, and so it's really wonderful to see him happy again. So the reason I'm telling you about my grandfather is because I think he has shown remarkable resilience. He faced the adversity of losing my grandmother and having to move out of his home, but then he bounced back from that, and now he's really thriving. And so resilience is something that we all could use. Our world is changing, um, and a lot of Australians have to face quite difficult challenges. Think about farmers having to cope with things like major droughts, or um, police, ambulance worker, firefighters having to attend to quite nasty scenes regularly. And resilience is also about more than those big impactful events. We constantly have to face everyday challenges over and over and over again. Those of you who uh, have become parents, think about the challenges that that came with. Or if you've become a carer for someone. Or if you find yourself having to sit through 12 presentations in one evening. <laughs> um, so the problem is that not everyone is as resilient as my grandfather turned out to be. And poor resilience is associated with a range of problems, including both physical and mental health problems, an increased risk of suicide, which is a big problem in farmers, and also things like um, loss of productivity at work uh, or at school and substance abuse problems. So the question is, what makes one person more resilient than another person? There's some things that we know about resilient people already, for example, that they have quite strong social networks, but there's also a lot of things that we still don't know. And by figuring out more about resilience, we will be better able to develop programs to help people become more resilient. So my research looks at what goes on in people's brains to make them more or less resilient. So with my grandfather, it wasn't something in his environment that changed and allowed him to adjust to these changes in his life. It was something in his mind, something about the way that he processed the information around him. So in my research, I tried to find those cognitive processes, those cogs, that make resilient people who they are. So for example, in one project, I'm looking at whether older adults who have developing care needs, whether they are more resilient and can stay at home for longer, if they are better able to see things from multiple perspectives. Now, I really love doing this kind of research because I think figuring out these brain processes is part of the key to helping people become more resilient. Thank you.